Hey, speaking of hating to lose, the CEO of Palo Alto Networks, that's Ed Nikesh Aurora, and the CEO of CrowdStrike, that's George Kurtz, are both extremely competitive. They know how to stop cybercrime better than anyone. I know it hurts our diversification efforts, but the Chapel Trust owns both these stocks because I'm a huge believer in cybersecurity, and I'm not going to be left behind by a great stock here. There's so much crime happening online. These companies literally can't handle all the business. Can you imagine I call that a high-quality problem. Last night, last night I saw one of the greatest quarters I have ever witnessed, a quarter from a company that I finally told you to buy not that long ago after fighting for ages. I'm talking about, yes, indeed, Palantir. They've got a big cybersecurity business and do some consumer packaged goods work, too. But they're mainly a defense contractor. Palantir brags about making its clients more lethal. And judging by the numbers, which included accelerated revenue growth and phenomenal margins, they're clearly accomplishing that goal. Kramer noted that Palantir Technologies, Inc. s favored due to its high-profile government contracts and the buyer's belief in it to reshape the U.S. defense budget. How strong were these results at Palantir? I'm going to quote CEO Alex Clark, who is uh, in... in Immutable, indomitable, I don't know, one of those ifs. Quote, given how strong our results are, I almost feel that we should just go home, end quote. Now, there's a guy, there's a guy who's got bravado. All right, anyway, I like the bipartisan nature of not spending as much on defense hardware and training and instead relying on Alex and friends to get it right for you, and that's what they're doing. This one's a real crowd favorite, by the way. It's now up 198% for the year, and I bet it keeps running, regardless of who takes the White House. Congrats to Alex and friends. Next up, everyone wants some environmental play that can work with either party, right? Good luck finding one. While both companies have recorded significant gains in 2024, driven by their positioning in the AI space, Kramer credits Musk for driving the recent momentum in Palantir shares. I share stock market's latest news, data, and important information on my Telegram channel. If you want to stay updated with these things before everyone else, open the description of this video, click on my Telegram channel's link, and simply join my Telegram channel. It's time for Jim and Stop Trading. Well, the great retail a stock of this generation is the new people's Palantir, PLTR. Mizuho comes out today. They have a sell on and underperform. And uh, yet, but they raised their price target. And they this is from my top 10 list I do every morning. Free to anyone who signs up for it. It's number, you know, it's like number, uh, <laughs> number five. And I love this. In their little mention of Palantir, they say, we remain concerned by the lack of visibility into its business, and we find the current valuation indefensible. indefensible. We raise our price target to 30 from 24. <laughs> so you have this problem where you have someone who doesn't like a stock and it just won't stop. Retail loves pounds here. Obviously, they have software. They have Alex Karp, who's one of those CEOs that we dream of, right? He kind of just... Palantir is up a lot because I believe Musk is going to turn to them and say, the Defense Department, it's yours. Get rid of all those people, Kramer said. Tells it like it is, uh, curse words and all. Yeah, I saw Oppy up to target on service now as well. Yes, yep. absolutely. You know, we have a lot of the software companies that are doing well. I continue to think that Agent Force for Salesforce, Mark Benioff, is going to be the biggest product they've ever had. Look for a launch uh, uh, later this year. Uh, there's just things happening in AI that, again, Taiwan Semi has said is real, and they are. And people who want to chide AI should start realizing that it's not just chat PT and it's not just hallucination. I still use it. But Yesterday there, I looked there, at, there I wanted the lyrics of, a, of, of a, a song. I went to Matt and it says, I'm not allowed to give you that, sir. Interesting. Oh, that's really helpful, though. I mean, the larger question. Palantir is adamant about creating systems that don't put people in harm's way but the Defense Department is stuck in its ways. Kramer said. If you want to get Wall Street news at lightning speed before everyone else, like big investors and hedge funds do, then join my Patreon, where we share hedge fund level information for just five bucks per month. It's a new year offer. Join before it ends. Link is in the description below. See you there, said. Is, when is it really going to start playing in the enterprise in a significant way and or Justifying uh, well, that's the, very easy. The tens, if not hundreds of billions of dollars. That's very spent. easy. When you're no longer sitting next to me and I just talked to Agent Force, that's when it's made it. I mean, not that I want Agent Force. I'd rather prefer you. But I'm saying that if you're, if you're interchangeable, uh, I guess we could all save a lot of money and the stock would go higher. There it is. There's Benny off on Agent Force. That's a very important note because... The growth of our business is accelerating and our financial performance is exceeding expectations as we meet an unwavering demand for the most advanced artificial intelligence technologies from our U.S. government and commercial customers, Carp said earlier this month. Uh, and, and by the way, Matthew McConaughey 
is going to be involved with that. He's a great actor, but he's also a thoughtful person doing thought leadership on AI. And I, I, Matthew McConaughey is really cool. Yes. Although my wife prefers sitting next to Mike Sievert than Matthew McConaughey. It's just the guy with the pink socks, much cooler. No, I no, no. You told that story. Matthew McConaughey. Well, I, not everybody watches every day, that's so I figure. I mean, and plus, it's like the bot over here. Next up is an enterprise software company, Palantir, which exploded on the scene this year with some big contracts and some big growth. Palantir came public via direct listing in 2020. It kind of hung out doing nothing until its sales finally took off, and then, man, this thing was just a rocket ship. Palantir is the brains behind much of the military that we don't know about, is a developer of advanced software platforms, and is known for its work with government agencies. Earlier in the year, it secured a $480 million contract with the US Department of Defense to develop the Maven Smart System, set to be completed by 2029. In November, it also partnered with Anthropic and AWS to offer US agencies access to clawed AI models, enhancing data processing and decision-making capabilities. More recently, on December 9, the company expanded its contract with the US Special Operations Command, SOSICOM, with a one-year, $36.8 million deal to support the Mission Command System, MCS, and enhance technology for US Special Operations Forces globally. The deal includes deploying AI capabilities and fast-tracking software deployment using Palantir's Ontology Software Development Kit. Additionally, on December 6, Palantir announced that the company and Andrew Industries are launching a consortium to help the US lead in artificial intelligence, focusing on developing infrastructure to transform AI advancements into next-generation military and security capabilities. The partnership aims to address two main challenges, data readiness and processing data at scale. To tackle the latter, they will use Palantir's AI platform, AIP, for cloud-based data management and AI development, meeting both commercial and national security needs. I have started a new YouTube channel by the name of Wall Street Detective, where I will post secret and exclusive updates of Wall Street. Subscribe now to stay up to date. Link is in the description below. Next up is an enterprise software company, Palantir, which exploded on the scene this year with some big contracts and some big growth. Palantir came public via direct listing in 2020. It kind of hung out doing nothing until its sales finally took off. And then, man, this thing was just a rocket ship. Palantir is the brains behind much of the military that we don't know about. They are, they are really the center of the brain's machines. They've been rallying against the big five military defense contractors. They don't like that gang. They think it frustrates everybody else. The firm uses advanced data analysis and artificial intelligence to help the Pentagon see patterns, process data. Again, though, I think Palantir is loved because it's trying to upend the Defense Department, potentially saving tens of billions of dollars and saving the lives of those who might be on the front line, such as precious pilots in very expensive jets. Buyers think that Palantir will reinvent our entire defense budget, which is entirely possible because these guys are tight with President-elect Trump. Palantir is a developer of advanced software platforms and is known for its work with government agencies. Earlier in the year, it secured a $480 million contract with the US Department of Defense to develop the Maven Smart System, set to be completed by 2029. In November, it also partnered with Anthropic and AWS to offer US agencies access to clawed AI models, enhancing data processing and decision-making capabilities. More recently, on December 9, the company expanded its contract with the US Special Operations Command, OSACOM, with a one-year, $36.8 million deal to support the Mission Command System, MCS, and enhance technology for US Special Operations Forces globally. The deal includes deploying AI capabilities in fast-tracking software deployment using Palantir's Ontology Software Development Kit. What to know, Palantir, which rallied nearly 50% over just the past month, may be the only stock outshining NVIDIA Corp. President-elect Donald Trump recently announced plans to nominate Musk and Vivek Ramaswamy to a new Department of Government Efficiency, DOGE, in an effort to curtail government spending. Kramer suggested that Doge could turn to Palantir for help cutting defense budget spending. He noted that most people don't realize that some government departments could be cut back substantially. The Tesla CEO could look to Palantir to modernize the Defense Department and reduce reliance on outdated methods of warfare. And yet, see also, Musk, Ramaswamy, should target transdimity in budget cuts. Short report says, target ime la nefe, why it matters. 
Kramer's take underscores how influential Musk is expected to be under the incoming Trump administration. It's worth noting that Doge wouldn't actually be able to cut federal spending since it isn't a real government department and would need to be created with congressional approval, and Congress authorises all federal spending, including to the Defence Department. They like big things, big expensive programs. Alex Krupp is not like that, Kramer said, referring to Palantir's CEO. Palantir has the next generation of how we're going to do cyber warfare, and the idea of just hardware, hardware, hardware that is constantly over budget is the kind of thing that I think Musk is really after. Stand still, Palantir shares ripped higher at the beginning of November, after the company reported strong quarterly results driven by unrelenting AI demand. Revenue jumped 30% year over year, and customer count climbed 39% on continued strength in the US. Price action Palantir shares were up 61.31% at $64.85 at the time of publication, according to Benzinga Pro. Kramer discussed Palantir Technologies Inc.'s recently reported impressive quarter and federal contracts and mentioned he liked its defence business. Well, don't we start with Palantir, which reported one of the best quarters of the year, fantastic growth, fantastic gross margins, that's right, growth and gross margins together, that is fabulous, and they're killing it with federal contracts, including some important work for the Pentagon. Palantir's people tend to win almost everything that they tender for. They also have a great commercial group, but I like their defence work. It's a what I used to call a total up stock. Palantir is a prominent developer of advanced software platforms that specialise in integrating and analysing complex data to aid in decision making. Known for its work with government agencies, it provides essential tools for data-driven operations. Earlier this year, the company secured a significant $480 million contract from the US Department of Defence to develop a prototype called the Maven Smart System. This contract, expected to be completed by May 2029, marks a further deepening of the company's relationship with the Pentagon, following a sole bid solicitation from the Defence Department. Additionally, we talked about the company's third quarter earnings report in our article, Jim Cramer's Best Performers List, Top 10 Stocks. Here is an excerpt from the piece. Palantir saw particularly strong growth within its government business. Revenue from government contracts rose 33% year over year to $408 million, with US government revenue alone surging by 40%, reaching $320 million. This marked the highest growth the company had experienced from its largest customer in 15 quarters. In November, Palantir entered into a partnership with Anthropic and Amazon Web Services to offer US intelligence and defense agencies access to the Claude 3 and 3.5 model families on AWS. The integration of these Claude models within Palantir's data analytics platform will help government agencies process large amounts of complex data rapidly, identify patterns more effectively, streamline document revenue, President-elect Donald Trump recently announced plans to nominate Musk and Vivek Ramaswamy to a new Department of Government Efficiency, Doge, in an effort to curtail government spending. Rama suggested that Doge could turn to Palantir for help cutting defence budget spending. He noted that most people don't realise that some government departments could be cut back substantially, EWE, and assist in making informed decisions during time-sensitive situations. Hmm, they like big things. Big, expensive programs. Alex Karp is not like that, Kramer said, referring to Palantir's CEO. Palantir has the next generation of how we're going to do cyber warfare, and the idea of just hardware, hardware, hardware that is constantly over budget is the kind of thing that I think Musk is really after. Then, given the uncertainties we had in 2008, Palantir shares ripped higher at the beginning of November after the company reported strong quarterly results driven by unrelenting AI demand. Revenue jumped 30% year over year and customer count climbed 39% on continued strength in the US. The growth of our business is accelerating and our financial performance is exceeding expectations as we meet an unwavering demand for the most advanced artificial intelligence technologies from our US government and commercial customers, Cup said earlier this month. Jim Cramer said in the latest program that Palantir Technologies, Inc. can go much higher amid the Trump presidency. There's a sense that a Trump presidency will bring more hacks. This one will do best. Palantir, upending the Pentagon procurement process, making it possible for us to play offense in cybersecurity. President-elect Trump is going to have a lot of fun with Alex Karp, the co-founder and CEO, 
That stock could go much higher. I don't care about the valuation. I know it's a popular stock. It can go higher. What makes Palantir Technologies Inc. one of the top AI stocks? Its technologies are actually solving the problems of businesses. Palantir's data technology ontology is solving the famous hallucination problem for AI systems thanks to the company's years of experience with military and defense systems. Earlier this year, at an event with customers, Palantir Technologies Inc., N-I-S-Y-N-C-L-T-R, shared some specifics on how its customers are being able to reduce costs and increase profits due to its artificial intelligence platform, Zed, AP, that was launched about a year ago. Airbus accelerated A350 production by 33%, BP reduced cost per barrel by 60%, and Jacobs Connect cut power usage by 30%. Panasonic decreased waste by 12%, ESI Group sped up ERP harmonization by 70%, and PG&E reduced transformer ignitions by 65%. Eaton boosted productivity by 25%, while Tyson Foods achieved $200 million in cost savings. However, Palantir Technologies Inc. stock's valuation has been a concern for many. The stock is trading at about 21.2 times the next 12 months NTM revenue. For fiscal year 2024, Palantir expects revenue growth of 24% year-over-year to $2.746 billion with an adjusted operating income of $970 million, representing a 35.3% margin. However, revenue growth is expected to slow over the next two years, with estimates suggesting a 22% YOE growth rate, potentially bringing revenues to around $4 billion by fiscal 2026. If Palantir Technologies INC, NYSEPLTR, can improve margins by 100 basis points annually, it would be able to generate about $1.5 billion in adjusted operating income by FY26, with a present value of $1.3 billion when discounted at 8%. Applying an S&P 500-like growth multiple of 2.5 to 2.75 times earnings, Palantir Technologies Inc., NYSECPLTR, would have a P-E of 46, translating to a price target of $27, significantly down from its current price of $42.